Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday, February the 4th. This will be our chart lesson for today. And the first thing I want to show you before I forget about it is uh, when you get a leg this strong down, and you should have had your trend line off these first couple of swings, you may not have known exactly, um, you know, where to start with it. You might have started there. You might have started there. Uh, but a lot of times it'll be off the closes. So when you got this big turn down and started moving down again in here, you had to drag your line down here, and you can see that it came into play all the way down again, uh, all the way down through there, actually. Um, so I believe this was your trend line today. That's what I was looking at, and I just cloned that line or made a copy of it and drug it down to here, and you can see we just had a, a tighter channel. We really got a little oversold here. But anyway, whenever you see a leg down that's this bearish and then you get a two-legged correction in the middle, that's generally the halfway point and you usually get another leg similar. Um, it won't always be 100%, but generally it'll be pretty close. Uh, it may overshoot it or it may undershoot it. Um, but you got to be aware that you might get that second leg. And when you, especially when you see you got one leg, then you got a little two-legged down correction. Then you got that second leg like this one. So that's a two-legged correction with a two-legged correction in the middle. And that's a very good sign that we're probably going to make another leg down. So when you found this trend line right off of those closes right there and you touched it again and got that bearish reversal bar, there's, there's different reasons for entering here uh, besides the trend line. I'll show you that. You had those highs right across there as well. So this is just a little failed break higher and a downtrend um, after prices had already gone into a trading range. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to show you, here's your first leg down, and then there's your two-legged correction with a two-legged correction in between. And if you drag that down, you can see that we came really close to a measured leg. And we came up a little bit shy, but a lot of times that's a... You know, that's telling in itself. That might tell you that we're a little stronger, so you need to be careful about going short down here near these lows again. So just keep that in mind. But let's talk about each of the trades. Let me back out a little bit here. Let me get this off the screen, and we'll back out just here. But you can see that measured leg comes to bar right there and we may end up making that we may run down here again and continue you know we got another two-legged correction here and this really does kind of match up off of that trend line right there too so we may have a bigger trend line right there and you can see that so that's a possibility as well you do get trends within trends so I'll show you that, and you can see that right there. So it may be that we had, oops, it may just be that we had a trend within a bigger channel. So we'll see what happens from over here. Again, there's other reasons to be thinking about going short. It's late in the day. I didn't, I, I'm done now, so I wasn't interested in this, but you had to, you had to notice that bar there, but now we it ended as a little doji. It didn't really take off like you expect. So I would I would wait on a second entry here before I would enter that, but we'll see what happens. But let me get this off the But hopefully that makes sense to you. And then you see we do have a slight overshoot of this trend channel right here. But then you can see that trend, and that's exactly where we reversed right there and headed back to the other side. So there's a couple of different things going on there, and I do believe this is a possible larger channel. We got to wait and see what happens right here before I, you know, normally you're going to get more touches uh, that that give you a good move off of it. So we got to see how this goes before I'm really going to. But this is something you got if you're still trading, you got to be taken into account. And this was the really important trend as far as I'm concerned from really from the open onwards so let me put this back down here because i want you to see these lows here and see how that came into play but let's start talking about the trades really starting around seven o'clock this was the first opportunity you had to trade and you I, I really meant to put this one in green 
But if you were trading, you, you might have wanted to take this one. This is, and the reason this is a fairly decent trade is because you got a new high here. It's not higher than this high, but notice that high. So it gives you a new high. So you start moving down. There's your first entry long. You kind of get another leg and then a second entry long. And you notice that's a failed second entry long. It's like a trap. Too many people probably, that's a reversal bar. Uh, if you did go long there, which you shouldn't have because it's been all downhill since the open, you shouldn't have been thinking long there, but it's a possibility you might have. But when that ended like that and this started turning down, I would have exited that trade really quickly because there's a good chance there's a trap right here, and it was, and that's so bearish. So, so this was not a bad place to go short based on that failed second entry long. And now knows that nice move down, and it was real quick and uh, real easy. And um, your runners, you know, long-term runners didn't survive. You see, they came back and got them, and that's generally what happens. But there was still a chance to get several points out of any runners. And when we made this double bottom here and turned up, if you didn't get out already, you should have. And you should have been looking at that trend line, this one right here coming down off there like so and you can see how that came into play and you can see this is going on down so I believe that this is this is pretty pretty obvious that we got a bigger channel with a smaller channel as one leg inside that and so we may come down and hit our target before it's over but that was trade one then your next trade notice this is a two-legged pullback to the EMA it's a a retest of this trying to retest this breakout area but that's a nice bearish bar off the EMA this is our bread and butter trade as long as you got room to scalp out before you get to the previous lows you almost have to take it and you can see it, it would have been a fairly easy scalp you didn't get anything more than that then it comes back but now you got a double top on a double retest and this bar traded up and came back down and closed on its low you can go short right there second entry short on a bigger picture and notice it runs and it runs our eye back down here and it gets hung up in here and this would have been where I would have been looking to exit especially when this closed as a doji maybe probably when that one did because that's almost a reversal bar right there and so this would have been your key to exit at that strong support so Really, all you got was a, uh, a scalp out of that. Probably nothing more unless you were real smart with your runners. And a leg that that's that small, it's really hard to get anything much more than a scalp out of it unless you just uh, are, are using limit orders down here knowing you're going to automatically exit. But again, once you started getting this congestion down here near this uh, strong support, that's when I would have exited. And I actually got some emails asking about this. Did did I think this was, was this a range day and were we bouncing higher from here? And was there a bigger trend line? Um, at this point, it was hard to say about this trend line right here. But now that I see this, I believe, that it, I believe it to be valid as well. But I was more interested in this trend line right here. And you can see all these pullbacks. We couldn't even get above the EMA. And if we did, we stalled right at the trend line. That's a good sign, and actually I think this trend line is more like, if you get it right off that close, like that right there, and you can see we touched it there, we kind of got above it a little bit there, we touched it there, and then we broke above it again there, and then we came on down, and notice how those come together right there at the same place, and that's where we reversed, that's, and then, you know, that's kind of what I call confluence there. And that's what you want to look for. But anyway, this was a nice trade. And uh, you should have really been, uh, what I'm going to do is just make this a dot now that I have a good feeling that we'll put this as more of a, it's a minor trend line, but it's an important minor trend line that you got to trade all the way down. And uh, again, I got some emails and people ask me, you know, hey, you know, is this the trend? And, and I believe at the time I thought it was going to be the main trend. But as we continue to get kind of clustered in this right here and couldn't break any further lower, 
then I, be, you know, I started to think, you know, something's a little different about this, even though this is a very important trend line, and you had to be looking for a, a measured leg similar to this leg. And that's one other point. Let me make that before I get on to the rest of these trades. What you will normally see, and there's nothing you can really do with this other than an FYI. It's an important thing to know. But generally, when you get one leg that's real smooth and moves real fast like that, you can see that's clearly a big down move. And then you get the correction. The second leg will be like this one, choppy and, and you know, doesn't look very strong, but it just continues to go down, 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 down. Or it might be vice versa. Your first leg might look like this, and then all of a sudden your second leg, and boom, it takes off, and it looks real smooth like that. Don't ask me why it's that way, but I see that over and over and over. There's Again, there's nothing really important to do with that other than know that just because this is choppy, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get this leg like this one. So that's the point I'm trying to make, in other words. So don't let this choppiness fool you because it's very common to see that after the first leg is real smooth and easy moving like that. And, it, and it's not just because this was overnight. That may be why this moved. But you'll see, you'll see it on a smaller level. Just to give you an example, look at that leg right there, how smooth that one is. And you had your pull back, and then look at the next leg. That's a two-legged move right there, but look how choppy that one is. So you will see it over and over and over. And there it is. And you can see that's a perfect measured move, but this one was real choppy where that one was real smooth and easy. And sometimes, again, it's just the opposite. It might look like this real choppy and then pull back and the next one's real smooth. And so just keep that in mind. Again, there's nothing, it's just an FYI. There's nothing that you can use to base a trade off of, but it might help keep you in a trade when you're seeing this kind of stuff and it's scaring you that you're thinking that this is strong support right here because that was really the point of my original deal. I got several emails thinking that this was a trading range and that this was strong support, which it is, but you but the trend always takes precedence, and you can't argue with that trend line right there that we keep bouncing off and the fact that we can't even get above the EMA right there. So that's a really tell – that's another tell, and you got to pay close attention to that. Don't get fooled. Uh, somebody asked me, how do you know uh, – another trader, same kind of similar question. How do you know when to take the breakout pullback short and when not? Well, you got to wait on the setup, uh, and neither – none of these were – even this one is not a great setup, but it's good enough. Uh, but you definitely didn't want to take this one because you had to go short. There's your setup bar. Well, you don't want to be going short at the lows, especially if you found that you know you saw this trend line coming off here. You want to get short up here, so you had to wait on this one to come back. And um, so, and it was, and this pattern is just a repeat kind of a this one. So same reasons. You didn't want to go short here, although. Uh, this was a failed second entry long, but there's just no way to get in there. I tried to get short on a limit order here, but couldn't get it filled. So um, couldn't get short till here. Till here, I was able to get a limit order filled on this one right here, but none of the others. So I believe it was it, maybe it was this one. Actually, it was this one right here. So um, we had those two bars, but I couldn't get it filled on that one. But anyway, so. Let's go back to this trade. I can't remember if I finished this one, but this you got a, you got a double top here. We didn't quite notice. We didn't quite test this area of this congestion right here, and that's what this final break higher was. If you see if you move that up, it's a perfect test of that little breakout area right in there. And but the biggest thing, it's a failed break higher. It's a touch of the possible trend line. It's a nice reversal bar. And you should have been able to get short on a limit order here if you were thinking that. This was another one that worked on a limit order. But look how bearish that is. You go short right there. Easy scalp. Um, you probably didn't get any runners unless you were willing to give it some extra room. But um, then it was off to the races down. And, and you really, you know, you could have even considered entering every time this came back to the trend line. But, you, but one that tight. You can't be entering down here at the low, so the only way really to get in is if you get lucky and get another entry like this, or if you're just entering blindly. And I don't recommend that you try to do that, but if you can't get in the trade and it continues to trend down and you know you've got a valid trend line, then you can't ignore that. And sometimes you just got to get a limit order and set it here and let it come back and fill it. 
and that's you know that's just what you got to do sometimes because the market is very efficient and they're going to keep you out if they can so then your next trade is here and this is another two-legged pullback to the EMA to the trend line we got a little break above the trend line here uh, but this may not even be enough to, to be considered a break. But either way, because it did go above, you were better off to wait on a good setup. This was not as good. It's better to wait and see if you get a second entry. If we'd have closed on the low here, and this is a little tiny doji right at the EMA, right at the trend line. So more aggressive trader would have entered here. The better trader would have waited to here. And then it wasn't a very good setup. And notice what I've been trying to go higher. But now you got a second entry short. And even though it's a doji, it, you know, it almost closed on its low. It's a second entry. It's with the trend. It's off the trend line. All kind of reasons to take that trade and, and look at move down. Hesitated a minute here, but you had these matching lows, and that's like a breakout pullback short. Not one you want to enter on, but that's what that is. And, and we continued on down. And then here's another breakout pullback. You know, now you got a solid breakout for sure. And they came back and tested it, and then, boom, look at it go. And that one's right off the trend line. It's a breakout pullback short. This is one of the breakout pullback shorts you'd want to enter. Uh, not necessarily right here, but this was a pretty good one, and you can see it moved on down. What does it do? It touches the lower channel line, comes back right to the EMA. Look at that reversal bar. And, again, you might have tried to get short there with a limit order. I don't believe it would have gotten filled depending on how quickly you put it in there, because really you would have had to do it before this bar closed to get it filled, and I don't think you would have had it in there that early anyway, so uh, not much chance of a limit order on that one. But you can go short right here on that bearish reversal bar, another easy move down. You probably should have been thinking exit off this line, because look what happened, it comes back. And if you didn't exit there when this ended like that, you definitely should have been out of any runners because you know it's probably coming back to test this high. And that's exactly where it went. And there was a failed second entry short here, but there's no setup there. Notice how bullish that bar is. You don't want to go short below that bar because this is what happens. It ticks lower and then reverses and traps you and traps and gets everybody, you know, doubting whether the trend is ending. And then it comes right back down again. And notice how big this circle is because there's multiple entries here. This is a double top. There's two legs up. So on a bigger picture, this is your better second entry. It really is. And even though you got a tick lower, if you went to a slightly larger chart, you wouldn't have that there. And so this is a great second entry short. And it's a nice reversal bar. It ended up hesitating, and you could have gotten shaken out of this one, and I wouldn't have blamed you if you did. Um, especially when this one bounced too. But for some reason, you know, when you've had a trend this strong, you got to assume you're going to do a retest. Uh, but what was kind of questionable was maybe was there a trend line over here off, you know, this trend line. And so you had to be considering that. Uh, but I just feel like, you know, this trend line was so strong and this channel was so evident and you just really almost had to have a retest. Nothing's ever written in stone, so it could have easily gone high, but this was worth hanging on to and keeping your stop above the original signal bar. If you entered here, uh, this was a second entry. This was probably just as good an entry as this one, maybe even better, because now you're getting a second entry from the other direction. And... Again, it hesitated, So, again, but if you had your stop even above that signal bar, it came close, but it never got filled, and so then it turns down. You really don't want to enter here, although this is a failed second entry trap, so you could have. It meets the criteria because there's a trap there. Anytime you get a failed second entry against the trend and it turns back with the trend, and look how bearish that is. So even if you went long there, you had to ride it out a minute. But like I said, it was, you know, it almost threw me out right here. I almost exited and went ahead and took my money right here. But I said, you know what, I'm not going to do it because we got the trap and it continued on down and worked. And I exited right here. And that was it for me today. It worked out perfect um, by just being patient. But that, but you never know what's going to happen. But you got to remember the bigger picture. The trend is down. That's the first break of really major break of this trend channel. 
So there's been no retest yet. So you got to keep that in. You got to have that in perspective. And somebody sent me an email right in here and says, hey, do you think we're going to have a retest or do you think we're going to go higher? And, you know, I just basically my answer is until you get a, re a retest or a reversal pattern, which looks more like this, you got to stay with the trend. And so, you know, that was my reasoning for saying that to the person that asked me that. Uh, that's why I was still convinced we were going lower. Did I know for sure we're going low, low, lower? No. But I'm going with what the rules tell me. The rules tell me that, you know, after a trend down like that, once you've had a trend line break, you're going to get a retest. And at the very least, if you don't, you're going to get a reversal pattern. And that is a retest and a reversal pattern together. We didn't quite get a new low, but getting a reversal pattern there was probably good enough. I don't think you want to go long there. But now we're just kind of in this trading range. And then you got a failed break higher here. And that reversal. And that would have been good for another scalp too. And that is a second entry short. Notice this. It, this is really a repeat pattern of this right here. Uh, it's almost a perfect repeat pattern. And remember when something works once, it's likely to work again. So that was another reason to think about going short right there when we saw that set up a minute ago. But anyway, lots of chances to get short today. And even if you just scalped out of every one of them, you know, that's assuming you didn't take that one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. There was really eight, nine, ten chances to take an easy scalp before lunchtime today from trading from 7 o'clock. Really trading from little after eight o'clock it doesn't get much better than that and every one of them and this is a good example of why I'm always harping about staying with the trend if you were trying to buy this all the way down through here you might have scalped out a few times but the odds were that if you just get on with the trend and try to stay and this is where you might consider giving a trade more room when you got a known trend line like that that's holding and prices are continuing to work lower, and you're thinking that you may get a second leg based on this pattern right here and how bearish that leg is, that's when you might say, hey, I'm willing to give this entry a little more room rather than a break-even stop. And if you just kept it above the original uh, entry, look what happens. Then you're able to ride this all the way down. And that's the same thing with every one of these entries you know, when you got a strong trend and you ain't had a trend line break and it's and unless it's getting late in the trend, like right here, then you don't want you know this is getting a little late in the trend to be trying to do that. And that's why I didn't mark that trade either. It's not a great setup. Um but it's really late in the trend with you know, to be going short way down here. And I didn't you know, it's not worth the risking it, especially after bouncing right there off of this what I call confluence right there. That's a you know good sign that we may finally get a trend line break. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. That's pretty much it for today. Hopefully that was some good information for you because there were some things here we got to talk about that we don't always talk about in the videos every day. But um, hopefully you had a good trade, uh, good trading day today. And if not, you'll have a better one tomorrow. And we'll be back tomorrow around the same time to do this again. I traded a little later today than normal, so that was reading this is a little later going out. I'm trying to get these out by 1 o'clock or so, noon to 1 o'clock every day. But I traded right up through um, a little after the noon hour myself. So didn't get a chance to do this early today or get out of here. But I'm not going to leave if, I can, you know, if I'm still making money. So, but... Uh, unless I got something going on. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.